Can I say a very warm welcome to everybody joining us this evening. Uh, we know that we may have a little bit of a glitch on the double booking system, so it's great to see everybody who is here. Um, so welcome to Drawing Projects UK Online uh, for the event Undertow, which is a discussion with Emma Kerr and Pauline Scott Garrett. And it would be really lovely to know while we're waiting for people to join and to get their links connected uh, where you're joining us from. I'm joining you from Dundee um, this evening, so very lovely to, to see you. Um, and I don't know where everybody else is. You can pop things in the chat. It's partly to get you used to popping things in the chat. Hi, Aletta. Hi, David. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Sue. Um, that's brilliant. David's joining us from Oxford. Um, so we've got all sorts of people coming in. We've got a number of people who will have seen the show. So people from soggy Salisbury. I did see the storm <laughs> warning come in for Salisbury. Caroline from the Forest of Dean. Um, it's very lovely to see you all joining. Um, so, and from Spooky Medway, we did have a spooky image on the screen for a moment, uh, but we don't have that. So welcome to the alternative Halloween uh, session. Um, and we are, we're just going to wait just one more minute uh, while people connect um, within that. So joining us this evening are Emma and Pauline, but we've also got Fiona Cassidy, who's co-piloting uh, and we'll be looking after questions and putting some contacts and links uh, in the chat. And our process and protocol is that you can put questions in the chat at any time. We're going to have a brief set of images. I don't know if they have any commentary with them, but I suspect we're just going to look at them to give you some context to the discussion. And then Emma and Pauline will be in discussion and then there'll be time for a Q&A. So if you've got questions, please uh, use the chat, feel confident to do that. We are in a small group this evening, so it may be that at the end, people can come on screen if you'd like to, but please bear in mind, we are recording the event and we will make it available afterwards. So sometimes you might prefer to um, put your questions in the chat and let me uh, take them forward for you. So it's great to see we've got people from Bristol, Medway, Wiltshire, Oxford. So we're looking very, apart from Dundee, down there in the south uh, of England, which is great. And um, how many people have seen the exhibition? You can put a, either a show of hands or a, a thing up. So one, two, um, three, maybe, I think, in there. Great to see. So it just so that we put a context for you. Um, I think... It's probably time to introduce uh, our event properly. And I'm Anita Taylor, for those of you who've not met me before. I'm here from in the University of Dundee, being Drawing Projects UK. Um, and the session this evening is really intended to focus on the development and impact um, of Pauline Scott Garrett's solo exhibition undertow at the Wittox Gallery at Rise in Froome and the thematic programme of community workshops that were devised with Amica as part of the project with Vallis First School and the Open Storytellers in Froome. So it's a really um, lovely project, it's a great exhibition and uh, it's great to see this kind of conversation I think that we're going to have uh, around how we engage people with themes through the visual arts. Um, Emma Kerr is an artist and freelance artist educator, and since 2009 she's enjoyed working with individuals and communities by leading projects and workshops in art galleries, museums and schools. Emma's purpose is to find ways of engaging everyone's creative potential, which drives her passion for art education. Emma studied uh, a BA Honours in Fine Art at the University, sorry, the Arts University Bournemouth and received a full Arts and Humanities Research Council scholarship to complete an MA in Sculpture at Wimbledon College of Art. Emma's received the Marsh Award for Excellence in Gallery Education in 2022 and 2016 from Engage, the National Association of Gallery Education. And I'm delighted about that as I'm also the 
chair. So I was delighted to award that award online, which we said was a very peculiar thing um, to do online last year. So but really, congratulations on the work with Gallery Education. It's really fantastic. Pauline Scott Garrett, um, Fiona might want to maybe highlight them in a moment because uh, we're going to show some slides. But Pauline Scott Garrett initially studied fine art at Sheffield Polytechnic, followed by a scholarship to the Academy of Fine Art in Vienna and MA Painting at Chelsea College of Art. As the founder trustee of Sheffield's Creative Industries Project, Yorkshire Art Space, her work is included in Sheffield's visual arts collection. Pauline has a postgraduate degree in cultural management from City University London, and that led to roles such as director of the Royal Pavilion in Brighton and, and the development of the National Lottery funded Milton Keynes Theatre and Gallery. Um, Pauline returned to full time creative practice eight years ago, and her studio is currently at Drawing Projects UK uh, in Wiltshire. And in 2022, Pauline received a Developing Your Creative Practice Award from Arts Council England to deliver this year long residency and exhibition project. The, uh, this element of the project is, I'm just going to be sharing my screen and talking at the same time, I'm not good at multitasking today. Um, the um, exhibition and is the outcome of that research led residency and this particular element of it um, is a really critical part um, of the project to work with communities to investigate the themes underlying the exhibition. So I'm just going to, we thought, because not everyone would have seen the show, that we would give, uh, Pauline, I don't know if you want to say anything as we show them or whether we'll just show the slides as context, um, to show you some slides of the space. Um, some of you were in the earlier discussion uh, with Pauline and the curator Gary Sangster. Um, but this is to set a context for anyone who's not seen the show and seen the work. And the exhibition is set on the upper floors of a very beautiful chapel in Froome. So I'm just showing slides. Pauline's just going to nod. Thanks, thanks, Anita. Um, I don't, can everybody hear me? I'm just, it's great to actually um, get a chance to see the work for those who haven't been able to travel. Um, the key themes of the exhibition were around flight and migration. And I did a, a program of research, a, a long program of research about the chapel itself and about Froome and its its long history of uh, providing a place of sanctuary for people who were looking for a place of safety. And that informed a lot of the work. Um, and you're seeing some of the images. These Some of these are a large scale um, intaglio prints. These are some, uh, also for the first time through the DYCP award, uh, got the chance to work in video and these are some stills from uh, the video I made uh, to go alongside the show which is also dealing with the same themes and there's just some images also I made a hundred collages as a sort of site-specific installation piece which goes around the prayer rail uh, which circumnavigates the chapel so it's like some images there and I think there's one final image yeah, yeah that's like brilliant it. it's it's just really great to hear you put those words to it. and these votive pieces a hundred votive pieces around the prayer rail are very moving in the context of seeing those very large scale prints that um, suspended because they do suspend and float in the space um, which forms an equivalent I think to some of the content within them. We also have two short videos to show which are an outcome of the workshops which Emma will talk to afterwards but let's just watch those as we go.
think that's the end of Mr. Um, I'm going to stop sharing so that we can see Emma and uh, Pauline on screen. So if we're highlighting them, um, we can go from there. Emma, both, it was wonderful to see Pauline's work and wonderful to see documentation, which in itself is really exciting and interesting about the way in which you've engaged different people to think about the themes. So the sense of wateriness and floating and um, all sorts of things are there that form an equivalent to the theme. And I just wonder whether you might like to start us off by talking a little bit about how you went about these films. They are silent apart from the thud of that boat, as far as I understand in the second one. Um, and but they're very evocative in terms of their visual qualities um, and I wonder if you'd like to just introduce you know, what you were aiming to do with the, the projects with the community groups but also maybe to think about that documentation maybe you want to start with documentation before you go uh, into the detail yeah um Thank you, Anita. Um, so the first of the two films that we just watched uh, relates to the school workshop. Um, and the second relates to the workshop we did with the open storytellers. And if I may, I'm gonna skip right back to the very beginning because it will make sense of why the documentation is the way that it is. Um, so I was asked by Pauline over a year ago now to, um, she very kindly invited me to help coordinate a series of workshops for the community that exists around Rise Froome, which is the location of the Wittox Gallery, which is where Pauline's um, exhibition Undertow is housed. And as always, when I go about a project, and especially when we're thinking about learning and engagement and participation there are three key approaches or areas of interest that I really make sure that I pay attention to and I was thinking back and thinking well this project was no different and those three areas are relationship building connection to place and and for in particular for this exhibition and Pauline's work is finding um an area of the artistic practice that may largely engage a huge majority of people. And with Pauline's work, I felt that was very much placed in the process, uh, the way in which she went about her residency and also the processes, the artistic um, techniques essentially that are used within the show itself so we um, although Pauline and I had mutual connections had never worked together uh, so we spent a lot of time talking uh, having digital meetups and meeting in person and just really forming an understanding of what Pauline wanted to achieve with her res residency and as it was a, a research residency, there was a real sort of underpinning of getting to know the space, getting to know the geographical area, and in particular, the archival materials became particularly important. I think there was a moment sort of halfway through the residency where they took on a real significance and importance for Pauline, and that really, I was really aware of that process for her, um, and I hope she won't mind me saying just as you would in a learning programme or an artistic one, you go through moments of absolute clarity and you go through moments of frustration where the there is a feeling for something but not necessarily knowing how that's going to manifest itself so we talked a lot about the themes that she just mentioned uh in in relation to the work and I think those were the consistency throughout the whole uh, process which were this idea of travel or migration the idea of flight of a sanctuary and those were the things we sort of talked about what was going to be presented in the end, uh, I didn't know, Pauline didn't know at many stages. And then there was a moment when the archival material took on a new significance. And one of those uh, pieces of information was actually a photograph of children who went or had access to the most local primary school. And at the time and in the photograph, the context of that uh, being in that place was to offer a place of sanctuary. Um, and so it was it was really pers it was really important to Pauline and therefore for me, um, taking on the role of organizing these workshops that we needed to have that connection of place to the people that we invited. And so that was a really clear decision making that we should invite Vallis first school to be part of the project which was formerly known as Milk Street School, which was the same school that was accessed through this archival material. 
And uh, the second group uh, also came about because Open Storytellers are a, um, a charity, a community arts charity that allow all adults to tell stories, essentially, and they provide a day service, but they um, rent the bottom of the building. So they already had a home within the space where Pauline's exhibition was going to be. So we went through a process of, uh, or I went through a process of understanding Pauline's um, research better, understanding the way that she was working. And one thing that was clear from the very start was who we wanted to work with because of their connection to the place and the geography um, around, in and around where Pauline was undertaking this research. Um, the third component that sort of really started to make sense of how or what we were going to do was the processes that Pauline was using. Um, there are many sort of printing techniques within the work on, on show, as well as the thing that often stood out for me when Pauline was generous enough to show me what she was working on was the layering within her work, whether it be the collage pieces and sort of piecing different things together to sort of make new narratives or the sort of um, the layering of both space so the context in which the prints are shown so as you saw from the photograph there's a suspension of the the prints which allows this translucent and transparency through the work and it was that sort of space that I actually wanted to replicate through the learning program, that space to access the work. Um, and when I work with groups, it's really important that everybody has a chance to bring their narratives to the work. So it was getting uh, the balance right between allowing Pauline to present her research and the narratives that she was really close to and connected to, but allowing enough space that both of those two distinctive audiences, the school children, and the adults who um, were part of the workshop with the open storytellers, allowing enough space for everybody to then devise their own narratives and to create their own art within Pauline's work. So as much as we spent time together, Pauline and I, trying to learn about her process and the residency, we also had quite a lot of meetings early on with those two groups so that we could understand how they already worked um, and try to embed some of those ways of working into our workshops. So as an example, um, the group that we worked with were the very group that we work, um, went to see a session where they were devising. Um, so it was the same group of people uh, that we saw, perhaps it was probably Paulie might be able to correct me, but probably about six months on. Uh, but we spent time looking at how they worked um, and the way that they enjoy being creative and allowed that to sort of help cement the kind of program for each day. So both days were slightly different. We had one day of full workshops for the pupils at the school. And in that workshop, there was a slightly different focus to the second day of workshops with the open storytellers. Um, with the school's workshop, it was actually about trying to access things that perhaps wouldn't be afforded within a classroom setting. So it was about uh, students being able to meet an artist um, and as well as meeting an artist, an art artist instilling in those students that they are also artists themselves and have artistry of their own. So that kind of voice of that creative flair was really important and about asking questions uh, of what's on show. Um, and they did. Lots of questions were asked. Uh, lots of um, uh, interpretations were shared, as is always the case. And there's always the joy. Um, and also having a go at um, kind of emulating some of the processes. So we had a go at some, you saw a small snapshot in the video. We had um, sort of the almost mimicking the process of collagraphs. We made it sort of textured boards to then be able to sort of rub over to create the kind of crude impressions of their designs, as well as sort of layering with transparencies. Ours was a little bit more everyday. We used baking paper, but it had the same sort of effect that allowed that translucent quality and we were able to layer the children's work up together and then sort of taking that into some uh, drawing exercises so we had a, a box that was filled with water and it had a garment floating and actually Pauline's piece was the very first image that you saw in those selection of images became sort of the focal point for the school groups it was a really tangible object um, in terms of relatability into where that kind of image might be seen what it might mean um 
and actually even the word garment was something that was talked about quite a lot it's not necessarily the kind of um, go-to um, title for a, a piece of clothing like that um, so we we looked at a, a garment in this embedded water we drew it and then those drawings became um, the um, lino prints that then got added with the sort of um, collagraph like activities as well. So there was a, an element of meeting the artist, going to see the show, asking questions, kind of centering around that piece garment, and then coming back and having a go at some of those processes. Then for um, the Open Storytellers workshop, we then um, worked in a way that is very familiar to um, all the adults that are there. So what was really lovely is that we all went to go and have a look at the show and we drew and we chatted and we explored and we really um, just had time to take what was there in and just to see how everyone felt about the exhibition and then when we'd done that we came back and I'd uh, borrowed um, I don't know if anyone's aware I certainly wasn't before asked to do this project but we um, I've borrowed um, lots of archival um, not archival sorry artifacts from the RNLI they have a, a sort of a museum of kind of interesting things that have um, evaded their history so there were oh, I've got them beside me actually, <laughs> as you do um, but um, yeah so um, I brought lots of objects in that really were centrally ways of interpreting three things land sea but liminal space. And that middle one was really important because especially again, starting with Pauline's piece garment, there is a sense in that piece that we're not quite sure whether this garment is in air or in water. And that sort of feeling while we're in those spaces of not quite being grounded, but not quite floating either. And through all those sort of spaces, there were, you might have seen through the video, there were things you could taste. So there was mushroom to feel that kind of earthiness of the land. And then there was um, textures that were really kind of really visceral and really heavy. I talk with my hands, you can see uh, the more I'm sort of thinking in sensory terms, but there were things that could really try to start to evoke the sense of the feelings that might be accompanied with either those spaces, land or sea. And then again, this central sort of space of the liminal space was occupied by this crater of water <clears throat> that we then started to um, experiment with not only garments, but eventually lots of things ended up into that space. And really all of that kind of landscape was the space that I described that we wanted to achieve, which then allowed everyone to devise stories in their own way. Um, and that leads me then back to the documentation um, that you just saw. Really, they're sort of they're sort of snapshots of both days. They're just little tasters of moments that allow you sort of just a small entry into the the days that we had. But both had sort of their moments of magic, um, as you could probably tell. <clears throat> That's a fantastic description of of those activities and actually the way they were pitched with the very different groups, but also actually in terms of how the process enables us also to see Pauline's work um, also in a slightly different way, because we talk more deeply about, is it a liminal space? Is it, um, you know, is it in water? Is it not in water? And all of those qualities that are very beautiful in the work and are hovering nature, but actually to test that uh, with the group through making and thinking about that, I think is really, it deepens the experience and that's just a surface thing that's being deepened, but it, it, there are a whole bunch of things to follow up in there. Um, I'm wondering whether I should ask you a question first or whether I let Pauline respond um, to your reflections on on actually the context of this approach to engagement interpretation, um, responsiveness, guided responses to the work with these two groups led by Emma and how that related to your aspirations for the project. Thank you very much, Anita, and thanks, Emma. That was a fabulous presentation. It's, um, yes, just going back to the beginning, it was 
um, sewing and receiving um, a public award from the Arts Council, which was the, which was a big moment for me as a as a returned artist, as a practitioner who returned to my practice. Um, I felt I felt like a huge responsibility. I mean, it is a responsibility. I worked in the public sector most of my life in galleries and museums and so on, and so suddenly receiving some money directly myself, it felt like a weighty responsibility. And I knew um, it was going. It was a it was a year's project. I designed it. Um, uh, to have a series of components and um, in reflecting on the on the sort of community engagement element of the project because there's been several elements to it um, I felt that um, so it was really just like for everybody it was so important that it was designed in terms of good practice and um, uh, I um, Emma talked about how we were we I, I knew of Emma's work um, and had looked at it um, from from afar, if you like, and um, we we had a sort of um, a sort of uh, sort of time where we sort of introduced each other and just sort of sussed each other out really about whether we could work together and whether there was the sensitivities on both sides that that we needed to uh, to produce to do a productive um, set of workshops. And I just wanted to say that working with Emma was exceptional. Um, uh, in so many ways, and the creative uh, element was outstanding. But I also wanted to touch on the, the sort of practical, um, uh, in terms of her methodologies and how she approached it. The, um, uh, the I was really secure in uh, in working with Emma and with the groups um, that we decided to work with because she was uh, because of the kind of professional practice that she brought to it and that was something I I, I really wanted to, um, to to bring to the project um, and so at, at every level you know from things like um, you know, DBS and media consent and everything because you know we will, um, it, it's it's so important to make sure that what you're offering um, and uh, inviting people to take part in is is really kind of thoroughly explored and considered so that was a fantastic part of it and uh, uh, you know I enjoyed that as as a, as a creative element that um, Emma talks about was also, also ex outstanding um, it's it's hard to um, so it, it, so I was very immersed in the research that I did around um, the history of the building and the history of Froome and it, it surprised me uh, actually about how how fascinating and how um, multi-dimensional it was in terms of its kind of it, how it had offered sanctuary to people over the years and so this connection with um, the school was really profound for me, and I'm. Um, yeah, it was. It was. It's. It was something that I felt that um, uh, totally added to my own creative work. It was, uh, you know, so doing the doing the workshops um, extended my own uh, thinking and practice, um, and um, uh, you saw a tiny little bit of those dimensions in the video, which just very very beautiful, but particularly working with the open storytellers um, uh, after we'd been to look at the work in the gallery and had been some drawing and discussion and reflection there was the most um, there was the most amazing sort of immersive performance uh, so which was very unexpected for me I mean but work generally in two two dimensions um, and it was it was that that transfer, uh, to something that was um, sort of physically immersive. Um, yeah, it took me to a new place in terms of my work. And I, you know, I felt like um, uh, there was a just fantastic crossover there. Um, and I knew the workshops were going to be great, but it, it's, it's, um, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it's been an ex a sort of extension, a development of my thinking in terms of making the work. Um, so uh, that that feels very special to me. I mean, I've been involved in a lot of community education projects over the years and different sorts of engagement programs, but I felt like there was a kind of, yeah, you know, real sort of um, a, a deep and rich seam of connection uh, that Emma actually managed to facilitate with both of the groups. So yeah, very very special. That's fantastic to hear that, and I think. There's something, there's something in here that I'm not quite sure how to put into words, which is something to do with testing your own concerns and passion that's underpinned the work to deal with these themes, 
on the way that they're then connected to others, which actually, um, it's not necessarily an affirmation. Uh, some of it might be an affirmation that the subject and the content are critical things to deal with and that the creative arts provide a space for people to reflect on their individual experience in response to somebody else setting an agenda, if you like, through their practice. Um, but the, there's something in here that the rounding and, I mean, it's always humbling when people connect. Um, and I know that, Emma, you will have been dealing with people connecting in a, a very deep way because the subject um, did need all of those ethical things around it uh, because you're dealing with people's very private and personal experiences around migration, around, uh, I don't know if any of them were refugees, that's not anything we need to know, but it's connecting to very big social themes that are absolutely pertinent to everybody. They're things that are uh, the displacement of people is um, an incredibly concurrent uh, concern uh, for all sorts of different places, all sorts of different kinds of displacement, uh, and actually how we create places of sanctuary. One of them is through making uh, creative practice. It's about creating your own space, something that you can control. Uh, around that if you're privileged enough to be able to do that and by that I mean just able to do it. Um, so I think the, the the sense of these workshops which may be quite hard to transcribe to a wider audience but I think the films did it beautifully rather, because they you did have a sense of you don't need to know who the participants are you need to know the quality of the participation uh, and the elements that were connected to so I think it's, in a way, the, these develop a different sense of impact for your practice, Pauline, but they also develop a sense of impact for your practice, Emma. And they're different things that we're trying to seek uh, through these programmes and events and connections. Um, I'm guessing, Emma, is there anything in particular that was distinctive around this particular project that you might want to reflect on or share? Uh, with our audience. Yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, it's a difficult question, Anita. Thank you for that. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. <laughs> um, I think when you've, I think it's the thing I described at the very beginning is that Pauline had such an intimate and close knit relationship with her research and the place and the way that she accessed the um, archival material. And as you say, it did bring up some really loaded topics to do with migration, to do with sanctuary. And those words will have very different meaning and connotations for whoever is accessing them. And so I think when I was looking at them in abstract, it's working out safe ways that we can work around those. Um, not necessarily hiding anything, but being sensitive and safeguarding those that we're working with, making sure we check in whether it's anyone's lived experience, um, and then accordingly to that information, knowing how we're going to work um, and how we're going to find those space. As you say, the arts are a sanctuary in themselves. They're a space to feel safe, to be, feel heard, to feel valued, um, and to share and discuss things that are actually really difficult and upsetting and or all of the above that, that contain the whole spectrum of emotion um, and everyone will come to those with their own kind of tapestry of experience and therefore it makes it really rich when we then start to sort of discuss. So in abstract I was working out ways how I would keep everyone who I worked with as safe as possible but allow enough room for us to kind of discuss in those spaces. But then when I spoke, I suppose the, I think I've forgotten your word now, but you were saying the distinctiveness, the distinctiveness came in that then it was then coupled with a way that I find comfortable in that I really centered it around the people we were working with. So it became about the two things simultaneously. It was definitely about Pauline's research and the things that were important to her and that kind of host of heavy 
complex topics that that also brought out but it also was deeply centered around the people that we were working with and so they brought with them a whole host of ways that we could work and so by knowing the people better and the audiences it was much far easier to make those connections and to kind of find space to access Pauline's work because as as it turns out and as is often the case when you look at the work and you don't have that um, research context there were other things that were seen and there were other things that were accessed so as one example when you look at the large-scale prints they can look like maps they look a little like uh, areas of water and and land and for some of the children that was the way that they processed that bit of visual information and that was a starting point in itself. The, the emblem of the boat uh, then brought up a lot of things for different people. And again, that was registered differently for everybody who, who saw those things. So I suppose the distinctiveness was working my way through my own sort of process as an artist educator of being really kind of authentic to what Pauline was describing and working through in her residency, but finding ways that allowed the space and we could find the creative access and response for everybody that 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 were um that we worked with and as you saw from the two films there was definitely a really uh, a real sensory input especially from the second day when we worked with the storytellers um and that that brought something new yet again as sort of Pauline started to allude to and touch upon it was almost as if the the prints were coming into the room and, and that sort of muted and um, evocative palette of those greys and the pinks and the um, and the kind of sage greens were sort of coming off the, the paper. And actually, what does that sort of set of colours look like when you feel them in the room? That's a really helpful reflection on it. I wanted to ask, um, and I'm also encouraging people in the audience, if you do have questions, it's a very specific uh, conversation, but I wanted to ask something about the legacy of the workshops and the show is still on. So I'm thinking about the legacy of people who may have worked with the workshops and how they've responded. Is there an ongoing um, legacy of work or response to the show from I mean the open storytellers are in the building school is almost next door um so there there's a I'm wondering about the connections that are built that start to make new connections for people within the space and, and response to the work would you like to answer Paulie I think. yeah I mean it's directed at both of yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, um, the open storytellers work, work in a, 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 a fabulously nuanced way and um, having had um, had spent that time with them um, uh, and, and being part of the creation of stories uh, with them, um, I, I, you know, I just I know that the, um, the experience we all had together I mean, it makes it sound spiritual, and it, it was at moments, you know, it was like uh, because some of the um, uh, people working alongside the open storytellers were, you know, were musicians, and so it, it started to evolve into sort of, as I say, a sort of immersive performance. And I just know that that um, from, from talking and from um, from spending time, that 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 will have a lasting impact in the way that. Um, uh, in the way that they took part in that that workshop, I mean, I would say also it's very important. I I wanted to say that yeah, I I learned a lot um, both from Emma but also the open storytellers that day. It was it was um, I, I, you know I just realised that um, you know the multi dimensional nature of the creativity uh, that we'd we'd offered up, and uh, I, I I know that it's going to have a sort of you know a, a resonance whatever the word you want to call it will have an, a lasting impact I feel I feel reassured by that and um, um, and the, the connections that were made I mean the the storytellers themselves documented um, uh, a lot of the whole afternoon and created a, a blog about it um, but aside from that I just feel like the experience was was profound for all of us actually that day yeah um, can I go on then? 
Um, yeah, yeah, after just, you, Emma. I was going to add in um, that I know the open storytellers, um, they had opportunities for um, people as part of their group. As Paulie mentioned, there was opportunity to sort of write and take a different role within the group and and be able to write praises about the day and to share the work in, in that sense and sort of generate an extension of their um, artistic practice as well um, and and for the school I think it was also about reigniting that connection with the the gallery the Wittox gallery and and sort of hopefully to make more regular that contact uh, with the exhibitions that are on show and to sort of make a more a regular effort to walk uh, down the hill and and to access those um, creative spaces that exist outside school. I think those are, are really important impacts I also wondered Pauline, are there any, is there anything you take away from other people? Because what these um, engagement sessions do is allow a deep looking, which actually we're not usually given permission to think about. And it's obviously very focused and uh, contained within a, an experience. But actually, the way that people look at and respond to your work gives a different inflection to the way you see work afterwards I know I mean we at Drawing Projects as you'll know anyone who knows us is we have a a resident monthly poetry stanza and they frequently work in response to the exhibitions and it's a very lovely uh, riff if you like or a response um, that people have but it also allows us to see things in a different way to see the plethora of connections that people do make to things that you've put out in the world and that as an iteration as you go into the next phase of working. I, I, I do absolutely 100% I mean I'm still processing it all I mean as you mentioned the show is still um, is still on for another week and it's it's um, I've been lucky enough to spend a lot of time in the gallery and yet I have actually met some of the pupils I haven't had a chance to tell Emma that since uh, since we did the workshop, we've come back with their parents to see the exhibition or, you know, just to hang out in the building, really, which is such an amazing space. And um, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, because I took the opportunity of in making the show, as I mentioned earlier, to make work um, um, in digital media to make video work, which was a completely new kind of um, step for me. But and also we touched upon the collage pieces, which were all of which are text-based um, and it just sort of, it just all connected together so well. And um, I really, you know, I, for me, it's given me, um, it's given me a lot more confidence in my practice that um, it just the, sort of the expanded the way that I think about my practice and how I, how I might make work in the future. Um, and um, it, it, it's, it was a sort of, it was a fast track, if you like. Uh, I mean, it was a huge amount of work putting the, doing the residency and putting the show on, and that was very, very rewarding in its own right. But actually, then suddenly there was this amazing crossover and seeing my work through through other people's response and through other people's creativity. And I, yeah, I can't, I, it was, it's been profound for me, uh, but uh, it's hard, it's quite hard for me to talk about it because I haven't really fully processed it all yet. But yeah, I, as I say, I've, seen, I've spoken to a lot of people in the gallery and I've had also some quite, profound experiences of people saying that, you know, they came to the gallery every day just to sit there and to reflect on the work. And that seems like astonishing that people would regularly have uh, gone to see the exhibition and, but it is that sort of space. And in a way I chose it because it was that, it has a kind of community feel to it whilst still being a you know, beautiful professional gallery and within this um, amazing chapel, um, you know, architecture, which inevitably, you know, is a couple of hundred years old and it, it inevitably retains that, that sense of kind of um, some, some sense of it, it being a place of sanctuary. And, I, I, you know, that's, um, that's, that's been really clear doing the workshops as well as, 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 as spending time there making the work. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we forget sometimes that architecture reflects its purpose um, <laughs> and it well it, it's designed in order to enable you uh, to have that experience and to act as that space and when it's historic they've had some new uses new interpretation but inherently they hold that um there's a wonderful question that's just come in from mike collier um and 
The question is, could you, Pauline, tell us how you find the relationship between making, the physicality of making, and the embodied expression of the body in, say, an almost invisible room? And the work looks, he says the work looks fabulous, by the way, but let's hear the answer <laughs> to the question, and it does. <laughs> Wow, that's quite a question. So it's, Mike. It's a... <laughs> Good, great. Welcome, welcome, um, welcome this evening. Um, yeah, because in fact, I know Mike hasn't seen my work for for a few years, so it's it's um, uh, it's all about that returning to practice and sort of fast forwarding yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'm I realised that one is one of the reasons I I use printmaking to make my work and. Um, I in the previous talk I did I talk a little bit about the physicality I mean it's that so it's so I can't make work that isn't somehow embodied within me I'm sure everybody's like that and maybe I'm saying something that's blindingly obvious but I um the, the sort of physical um the physical connection with making the work but also but also like the, the bodily vulnerability the fragility and my work is off is about often about the fragility of the body and um and although it wasn't the lead topic as in the other work i made that mike's referred to an almost invisible wound um it it's it, it, it certainly um uh, for me um it, it's directly con connected to um um yeah to my to my own physical involvement in making the work sorry i'm rambling a little bit here but um it's it's also um i, I felt like it, it 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 moved to a new place with this series of work that's what the residency did it actually really helped me transform my work and i was able to exploit in a really positive way that that physical connection i have through um through the actually the physical making of the work but also my own my own emotional involvement in the work and so those of you who know me well will know I'm just like deeply connected I was absolutely kind of so connected to this topic and um, I mean in a way you know I set up the whole idea of the project some time ago and I didn't really realize how important it was going to be you know this has been an, 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 a very significant year for, you know it's been a really difficult year for all of us in terms of those topics around migration and so on and it's you know sort of it's come kind of closer and closer to our everyday lives so yeah there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a lot of interrelationships there um that um again i'm i'm still reflecting on and um and and doing the workshops um has has really helped um me think and resolve some of those uh, those things that sometimes it's quite difficult to feel comfortable about. I mean, I, again, I mentioned it in the Q&A I did before, like some of my work is quite uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable about some of the topics and that's really why I want to make the work. Um, that's some of my kind of, um, my sort of creative impetus. So thank you for asking the question. I hope that helps. Yeah, and I don't know if anyone else has got any other questions. We've just got five minutes or so for questions if anyone has them. I mean, I, I mean, I do think you're you're a fantastic example of what a developing your practice project um, does, because actually it allowed you to um, do some of the things that I think were happening. Um, so I think that whole thing about scale, you know, you have that enormous press, um, which you know the in a way you this the scale of the printing and the scale of the physicality of even handling the press and the human scale things that you're printing like clothes um and other things um somehow i, I mean I'm, it may have been clearer to you but actually I, because we have the privilege of watching from time to time what happens in the studios at drawing projects the way that this is built um and the work has responded to you and you've responded to the work, which is why I think that whole iterative process uh, is really interesting. But 12 months of focus um, to, a, to an end goal, which everybody needs, which is the how do I test it in the real world? And then actually you've built this framework within which to test it, which is working with others who are experts in their field to tease out responses to these very difficult subjects and also testing yourself uh, in those contexts as well I, I mean I just think you're a great uh, example of what can happen but also what what 
deepening that relationship through not not the validation that the award gives it's also responsibility and i can remember when i became artist in residence for the first time it was like ah what do i do i'm actually being supported to do what i said i would do and you've got a responsibility which can also be freeze rather than a uh, developmental thing so because it really tests you and i think it, it's a project that's a great example and exemplar uh, for how we can develop through these kinds of awards uh, a great example for arts council england if it's what it does for people at all stages of their career and how they connect into um, really important human themes um, that are incredibly timely to be looking at. There is a question from a letter, uh, which is a question about performance you mentioned. Could it become a real performance also with the school children? I mean, I know that you talked about performance with the open storytellers, uh, but is that something that might be a reverberation um, from from these workshops as a response? I think it's a very strong possibility because before we went in with our workshops, uh, actually it was coincidentally, but one of the aspects of their work was looking at water and it being a sort of a really difficult territory to navigate and how you actually solidify it and talk about it and describe it through action and the body. Um, and so actually I think the, the, the resonance of the workshop and the research that the group are already doing could lead to a performance or an outcome that is certainly based around these themes of land water and and liminal space so absolutely just to clarify the the school workshop um oh. certainly was more sort of um process based around sort of printmaking and and drawing um but i am hoping that the school will take on some of those processes because there were teachers and practitioners there that weren't as familiar with some of those things so hopefully some of that will be taken on not necessarily in a performance but uh, certainly in terms of processes back into school that's brilliant and and it is but i mean that sense of what's in the air and the zeitgeist and what connects all those um, things that we weave and connect together um are really important and i think that's a really beautiful uh, idea that that will continue because they already have that interest, they deepen it, and then they go from there. It's really great. Um, Marilyn, you've got a question about how you um, see the things. The event is recorded. It will take us a few days to get it up, but it will be on our YouTube channel, along with the previous event, so that you can see the context of Pauline talking about the work, uh, and both from the creative perspective, but also with Gary Sangster, who was a consultant, curator um, talking with Pauline and then this sits as a rounding about how we work with different people to realise our work. I mean that, one of the things that I think this does beautifully is talk away the myth of the sole practitioner um, because actually we all need the infrastructure of uh, different expertise, different resources, different places uh, in order to realise presenting the work um, and presenting the work isn't about showcasing necessarily presenting the work is about reopening opening and extending a dialogue so that that conversation uh, continues in many different ways Alessa's has got one more question which is more specific to the question from before which is how old were the children how large was the group and was there any lived experience in that group um, so um, the the children are from a, a first school, so they are um, the the children that we work with were year three children. Um, um, it's not for me to divulge anyone's sort of lived or um, experience. Um, however, it's important that we sort of check in with the school and and even if the specifics weren't lived experience, we're all humans that access the whole range of emotions and we never know how art is going to affect people so we did take some time to just um talk through the different themes that were explicit in the in the show or perhaps not depending on how it was translated by each individual um and um and so it was it was just made, making sure we set the scene to sort of make sure everybody was in in a safe and comfortable place to re ready to access the work. Um, so yeah, I think I think that wonderful 
reiteration about these are private places, the workshops and they're a space where we do things collectively, but we do them with the permission to test those things. And of course, there are things that may resonate a long way down the line uh, with those individuals about how they either connect to the value of art, value of creativity, value of reflection. Uh, and one other thing that I would say, and it's something uh, I particularly felt was resonant in the Trinity Boy Warfaring uh, show this year, is that sense that for me, I was framing it as drawing, but as an individual and collective endeavor, uh, as one of courage, care and discovery. And I think actually your the whole way that this has been approached is very much that sense of care, as a sense of courage, which is both resonant in the subject as well as the content and delivery of it. Uh, but that whole thing about what it is to be human underpins us, and it's all about that relationship building that you talked about right at the beginning, um, and how we build relationships, how we navigate the world, how we address really complicated issues, challenges and problems um, through creativity, which allows um, people that access through all of their visceral means, I also talk with my means, um, but at the sense of connectivity that comes through our senses to the materiality of the making, the scale, the rendering, the image, and the way it's presented and the way it forms an equivalent uh, to the content in hand. Um, I think we are close to the end. Uh, and unless there's another question to come in, um, I'd like to say the biggest thank you to Pauline Scott Garrett for presenting about a very brave and complex project supported by developing your creative practice project, but actually with deep, deep resonances and a strong foundation for a future. And I would like to see the show do something else like tour and go into other places. It's very site specific. Um, and that's fantastic because it talks, as we've heard today through the workshops, directly with an audience affected and connected to the histories and archival research that you've been working with. Um, but it, it seems to me that the resonance is much wider than that. And I look forward to seeing what happens next. And Emma, I think your wonderful connectivity, support, um, connections that you make through a really structured way, a uh, very care, careful, uh, caring way of dealing with the groups that you work with is really stunning as an exemplar. Um, and I think these are things that, wherever we are in our artistic practice and presenting things in the world, they're things that really matter uh, to hear about how we structure things, how do we share things, how do we connect? Um, and it's something we don't often hear about. And that's the other thing that makes this a very special event this evening. So I can I say thank you. People can put their microphones on and clap if <laughs> you'd like to. Um, because it is really fantastic. It's been a terrific conversation, terrific to see those films that gave a real indication and they will be available through the recording. There is meant to be other drawing projects, UK people, there is meant to be a Girl Friday on Friday. I have a challenge with it so keep an eye on your instagram we do have isabel rock speaking on the 24th of november uh, and jeanette Bond speaking in december as girl friday so i know i've got to pack a couple in uh, but the very next drawing discussion is with somebody on the call who's yvonne crossley uh, who'll be talking about octogenarian dance on mm. wednesday the 7th of november it's the wednesday of that week so we look forward to seeing everybody next week for another drawing discussion and we are we have rallied back our control of our booking system so there'll only be one place to get the ticket with one source of information um so can i say thank you to everyone for joining us this evening really wonderful to have a lovely engaged audience and thank you fiona thank you fiona for dates i don't have them in my head um <laughs> wednesday the 8th for yvonne crossley um, I really look forward to seeing people then. But thank you, Pauline and Emma, for such a, a really inspiring conversation uh, around Undertow, uh, which I highly recommend you get to see if you're in the region and can get to the region. 
and I'm sure it will gain some momentum in some way of shape and form. So thank you very much.